Hello and welcome to Anxiety Hacks podcast. Now I'm your host Kate Hudson Horn. Before we begin, my book Anxiety Hacks has just launched as an audio book, so check it out. It's on all the major platforms. Now our very special guest today is Sue Kennedy. Sue is the founder and CEO of a Author Academy. Sue Sue Kennedy Publishing author academy bookstore and healing with art she's profound understanding she has a profound understanding of anxiety and is reflected this is all reflected in her own personal experience because she wrote a book um, and that is called um, anxiety and depression effective strategies for coping with over three decades of expertise in book coaching publishing and speaking Sue offers a unique perspective on overcoming anxiety, drawing from her practical street savvy style and the power of real life stories. Sue connects intimately with her audience, bringing out their hidden genius and helping them unleash their full potential. Join Sue and Sue and I as we delve into the transformative power of writing, self-expression, and anxiety hacks. Together, we will provide practical strategies, share inspiring stories, and guide you on an empowering journey of self-awareness and personal growth. So here we go. Get ready to unlock your anxiety hacks and discover a life of greater peace and fulfillment. So, Sue, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you so much, Kate, for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Oh, fabulous. So let's begin with mm, with your experience then with anxiety and depression. So share with us, you know, your journey. So it happened a few years back now, but, you know, I was like most people, you know, have everything. I've got the husband, the great business, house, all that beautiful dog, and it all came crashing down around me. Uh, you know, it was like a domino effect. And, of course, when all that happened, so, you know, the marriage breakdown and then I lost lost my dog, lost the house, job, didn't have anything pretty much, and I just went, wow, you know, what's going to happen now? And and I before I knew it, I fell into a really dark hole. And I didn't actually know what was going on because back then it wasn't, it was spoken about but not as much as it is today. Yeah. It was still quite, you know, hidden. And anyway, I I sort of was happened to walk past the TV. It happened to be on, and I heard them talking about anxiety and depression. I went, "Hang on a minute, that sounds like me." I went, "Wow, okay, so that's what's going on." I didn't actually realize. So, but it got to the point with me that it was so bad that I did consider suicide. Sadly, and. Oh my yeah, it was it was bad because, as I say, I lost everything, absolutely everything. Was left with pretty much destitute. So it, you know, I just went, well, what's the point? But thankfully, I then had like two other dogs when it got to that point, and they pulled me out of it. Thankfully, mm. otherwise I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. Sort of going, hang on, mum, you know, and they sort of snapped me out of it. And so then I did research around, well, what's going on? Why, you know, how can I actually fix this? Because I can't live my life this way and, you know, I need to do something. I need to turn it around, but how do I do that? And luckily I was strong enough to be able to do that because a lot of people, you know, don't have that opportunity, sadly. So... I did lots of research and then I thought, well, the only way I can sort of help myself is to write about it. And I thought that that will heal me to just write about it. And I started doing that and it did actually start making me feel better to, you know, knowing and understanding what I was going through really helped. And from there I went, well, maybe I should turn this into a book because then I can actually help others as well. And so that's what I did. And, of course, back then there weren't people like me, like book coaches, to help. I had to do all the hard work, legwork, to figure out, well, how does this work? Mm. 
and it wasn't as easy as it is now to do it, although it's still not, you know, there's still a lot of little steps and pieces to do it if you're not, you know, don't know how to do it and it's the first time you've done it. So, yeah, I went and did all that and it took me quite a while and then, of course, had my first book written and published and wow. it was very exciting. I when I never forget because the first time I did it was with Amazon, and of course now I don't do it on Amazon. I do my own, but I never forget that day when it arrived in the mail. I think that was, even though I felt quite healed from the process of what I did, but actually receiving that book and seeing it, holding it in my hands and seeing my name on that book, was just yeah. the best feeling the best feeling. I felt so proud that I had actually achieved something so huge. Uh, it was just the best feeling. I, it's so hard to describe you. I mean, yeah. you would understand, Kate, but yeah. to anyone that hasn't written a book, it's it really is the best. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, so you thought to yourself, well, I for me, I feel that if I start to write out my thoughts and feelings, and get them out because people don't realize the power of, you know, even journaling, you know, how beneficial that can be to help people overcome, you know, or work through those, those difficult thoughts that we have that are also connected to the feelings and the feelings we have that are connected to the thoughts. So it's like a vicious cycle. It so is. it was obviously such a, a huge power for you to start to do that and start to, mm -hmm begin to unravel that pattern, that behaviour. Exactly, it was. And uh, in saying that too, I do have a gift for the listeners. Uh, and uh, I don't, I'm, sure, I'm sure I sent it to you. If I haven't, I will. But I do, I've just created another page called authoracademy.com.au forward slash gifts. But on there, there actually is a download which is about limiting beliefs. Oh. And it. And I think it's really important because we all have them, mm. all of us. And we even even though we do do healing around those things, we still every now and again knock up against that. So, you know, yeah. I know even myself, like in the past week, sadly I lost my one of the dogs that, that helped me get oh through this. Oh, my gosh, Sue, that would be that was very it's traumatic for you. Very yeah. traumatic, very devastating and it's been really difficult this week, but so I have actually got into that point where, yeah, I was starting to lose faith and I'm like, hang on a minute. No, this is not what he would have wanted me to do. He would have wanted me to stand up and keep going and just remember how blessed I was to have had him in my life for so long. So even though it's difficult, that's what I keep thinking of. So so maybe because, you know, I know from my clients how much their cats or dogs or animals have helped them through really difficult times. Mm. So maybe you could write a book about that because you probably well, have nothing that, else to do. <laughs> exactly. I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> but maybe you could write a book about that. that no, definitely. You know, they, they just are such a support and, and, you know, with such unconditional love. Mm. Yes. They provide. They so do, I so. think that's your next venture. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. That's oh, so that's been a very difficult week for you. It has been, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'm moving through it. Um, I'm yeah. allowing it to come through and, and just be because I need to, uh, because if we don't, that then turns into disease. So I need to to process it as part of uh, actually one of the program that I I offer people. I do have because I, I love doing art as well as writing, and I thought I, I want to do both. I'm greedy. I want to do both. <laughs> so I've created my my coaching program has got both. So I've combined them, and the art part of it is actually which is what I love doing. And I'm working on getting myself through this grief. And there's a couple of processes, but it's perfect for unblocking your story, but also also to help with traumatic experiences that we go through. 
and it's so powerful. I just love it. So it's part of what I do. I mean, I do do it standalone as well, but yeah, I have yeah incorporated it into. So how yeah, does helping. the how does the art fit into it? So when we when people write a book, they you know they they start off with an idea of yep, this is the book I want to write. But then some people get to a certain point point and this is why a lot of people don't actually finish their book because they I don't know they don't lose interest, they don't feel it, they lose they just don't have enough passion around it or they just simply get blocked for some reason. And so this process actually helps unblock that. But it also if it's not the book you meant to write, it'll show up. That'll show up as well. So we can then go, yeah, that's not really, that's the story that maybe we need to park for the moment or completely park, you know, altogether. Sometimes that happens because people, you know, once we sort of have a bit of a heart storm around it, we go, oh, yeah, no, that's what I should be writing about. That happens quite often. People don't realise they, yeah, start writing one story and then all of a sudden the, the true story that's supposed to happen comes through. Yeah. So, yeah, this this process, it's a gentle process. So don't take people back to the trauma because that's just wrong on so many levels. We, it'll Yes, it'll remind you of the trauma, but it will give you aha moments of why you are now you know, blocked and unable to move forward and will give you the answers of how you can now take that in a positive way and move forward. Mm. So it's awesome. I love it. And so there, there's two different ones. One is on the canvas and the other is just paper and pen and colored pencils. Because I, I thought if I do just the canvas, some people get that, you know, blank canvas fear. And I don't want to put people in fear because it can be a fearful, anxious thing, a blank canvas. So the the other tool with the pen and paper, that's why I have that, because if that is more comfortable for someone we go and use that so how tool. would they use that so you know for the anxiety listeners you know even if they hadn't you know they they didn't want to write a book but for them to express how they're feeling oh, yeah it's it, perfect it's look as i say we can do this standalone it doesn't have to be just because you want to write a book so we we sit down and we talk about the issue but there's different um algorithms is what they're called so different types of drawings that we can do to to help and we start off gentle and then we just you know um graduate up you know as we get further into it as you process and heal then we can you know you can go on to the the harder stuff to to make it actually you know like dig deeper a bit like an, an onion where you start peeling off the layers that kind of thing so we yeah. start peeling the layers but yes you can we we discuss it and then pretty much I just get you to there's a process but we you know, I just sort of coach you through it, talk to you while you're drawing and, you know, all of a sudden like some of the things that come up in the drawing, you know, it was, it's just amazing. Like, you know, the other day I had a, a lady, a huge breakthrough. It was just massive. Even I was shocked about how big of a, a breakthrough it was because she's a very anxious lady herself and she had sexual trauma when she was younger. And she, to this day, of course, she's a very anxious person, but she also has trouble eating. So she's always had problems with food and it all related back. Like when I, when I was looking at the drawing, I looked at the end and I said to her, can you see what I can see? And she's like, no. And I went, oh, my goodness, I can. So she had to draw these big thick lines and the outline was the um, – the profile of a face right, and where the trauma was, was right in front of her mouth. Oh, right. And I was, wow. Yeah. You know, and that's all done unconsciously. So, you know, it, and it was just, and then once we sort of sat and talked about it, she's like, oh, my goodness, that makes so much sense now. And she felt so much calmer and better. And even a friend of mine, we we kept, 
um, catch up every now and again for a coffee. And and she said, my goodness, she looks so different and she sounds different. I said, I know, right? I said, it's all because of this, this stuff that I'm working on with her. It's really helping. It's it's just I'm so blown away by the process. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's just when, you know, it's a form of art therapy, isn't it? And it's just allowing your mind just to draw whatever it wants to draw, allowing the unconscious mind. Yep, yep. Well, it's not yeah. quite like that, but, yeah, it's similar. Yeah. Mm. It's very, very amazing. Oh, wow, that's fantastic, you know, to be able to help somebody in such a way. Yep, yep. No, it is. It's, I'm so blessed. Yeah. So if... um. So if somebody had anxiety then, so what would you suggest to them that they could begin to do to start to work through that anxiety? I honestly believe, uh, I, I'm a true believer in meditation, but also journaling. Like yeah. I just think just journaling really helps because it's it's a way, you know, like you know, writing a book is great, but even just journaling, getting that, out onto a piece of paper or, or onto a computer, whatever, it doesn't matter. If that's getting, coming, you know, you're going in and bringing it out, it's a way of healing because when that stays inside and left and not dealt with, it turns into disease and that's not what you want. Yeah. And then it needs to come out somehow so it's going to come out in some negative way. Whether exactly. that's you know, whether that's who, it could be anything, OCD, it could be um, an eating disorder, it could be humongous. Exactly, um, all, all kinds self-harm of Self-harm or, exactly. or, you know, then, you know, the addictions as well. Exactly. So, yeah, it's really important not to ignore it. You need to, to process. You really need to process what's going on and, you know, and even if it's, you know, the same thing that's happening, you know, just keep keep writing it and writing it because eventually it will, you know, disappear because it's, like I said, that, you know, the layers of the onion, you keep peeling, you keep peeling it, and eventually you're getting closer and closer to the core of it where then you can just, like, blow it out of the water, so to speak. Yeah. And Absolutely. completely heal. So many of my clients have, you know, have been journaling and it's helped them enormously mm, so yep. you know I think that's such a helpful um route to go down yeah and then also then you mentioned about meditation yes I I, I believe in meditation as well because especially if you're anxious meditation is, is something that like keeps you present keeps you silent at peace and calm so it's really helpful and there's like if you go online there's lots and lots of you know self-guided uh, meditations at, at for at, for anxiety for all kinds of things yeah. so you know you can just go on and find one that resonates with you and and look I highly recommend listening to it you know every day and especially if you are anxious you know yeah absolutely so because I teach mindfulness um, and it is it's like pressing the pause button of your busy mind mm. and giving yourself a break by having that exactly. that, that uh, focus mm. to quieten your mind. Well, I need to. I actually because my mind is always on the go. It's just like, you know, it hasn't got an off switch. <laughs> and so I at, at night I actually put on a meditation at night to because I then focus on that voice and it helps me go to sleep yeah. because it stops me thinking of all the different things I need to be doing yeah absolutely you know if there's times that I find that you know I can't sleep which isn't very often but if it if that does happen then mm -hmm. I will focus I've trained myself to focus on my breathing and all the different sensations around my breathing and of course, my mind wanders off, but it's just being aware that it's wandered off and kindly, non-judgmentally bringing it back to, you know, to my breathing um, and, you know, focusing on the cycle of the breath as you breathe in and breathe out. So it's just so amazingly helpful 
And it all the a- people that I've taught mindfulness to over the years, they all have said the number one area that helps them is if they can't sleep at night with mindfulness. Actually, I have a, another quick one. I just thought of another tool that you could use. I've, I've used this at times myself. If something's troubling me, so it could be it, just that you're anxious, but you picture the that you're on a on a you know like stream that's running water. Oh yeah. And you put you put that whatever is going on for you, you put that on that wave and you watch it float away. Yeah, and just watch it float away. And and I'll tell you what, it's very useful. I've done it quite a few times and I'm like, wow, I feel so much better now. Yeah. Absolutely. I do something similar with with leaves in the river mm. or the stream. And mm. imagine that thought on a leaf and it just drifting away down down river. Yep. In order to let it go. Exactly. And then another thought will come forward and then you just keep doing that. Mm, Very until the Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So where um so with regards to your book on anxiety, so um you said so it's on Amazon. And it is on Amazon, yeah. So tell us about the book. So, yeah, the book is, it, it's uh, a, bit, a little bit about me and why I wrote it, but uh, it is also about the different types of anxiety and depression that people can get and also it talks about what to do and how, you know, little sort of tips in there of what you can do. So that's yeah. pretty much it, yeah, so... And what sort, of I, tip, what sort of tips are in there? So are you talking about the journaling, um, are you talking about yeah. meditation? Yeah, that kind of stuff. And also, you know, things like, well, what's the best thing that happened to you today? You yeah. know, write that down. What are you grateful for? You know, things like that, that, you know, because you've got to look at the side of you that, well, all sides of you are amazing and beautiful, but at that moment in time, you may not think so. So just questions that you ask yourself of, you know, why am I so amazing, you know, and, and just reminding yourself of all the good things that you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's called Anxiety and Depression, Effective Strategies for Coping. Mm. Yes, yeah. and I am going to turn it, get the ebook, and put it on my bookstore as well. So, okay, so we'll have the link to the bookstore in the show notes. And how do people find the bookstore? It's uh, www.authoracademybookstore.com.au. Okay, okay, so it'll be on there. Um, and so you have because you've written ten books, haven't you, Sue? I have. Unbelievable. I love it. You took that and ran with it. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> wow. And what's uh, what's your most recent book? Because you help people with, you know, with publishing books, don't you? I do. do, yes. Uh, so the latest one's actually self-help books. So one is about the it's the ritual journal and the self-love journal. So, which is probably a good one for your audience. Yeah. So what's that called? It's, it's called? The Self-Love Journal. The Self-Love they, Journal. These, these are actually on, on the bookstore. So, so in your bookstore? They are there, yes. Oh, wow. Um, And so tell us, so what are you doing at the moment? Where are you now? As in? Well, work. with your with your work and so you're So mainly, people. yeah, so so. I'm mainly helping people, uh, I'm coaching people to help them write their books, get their books written, so from, you know, start to finish. And my program, my coaching programs include holding your hand step by step from, you know, as I just said, start to end. But it also includes a professional proofread and edit, formatting um, that we were talking about that we're, you know, not the the most exciting thing to do, but it's important, and it also includes printing of the book as well. So, yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Mm. 
And so remind us, so if we wanted to find out more about the um the drawing, that's all on your on your site, and that's under the free section. Uh but what you can do, there is on that um authoracademy.com.au forward slash gifts. Down the bottom, there is a link that you can book in for a half an hour free heartstorming session. So if you wanted to, you could either do that and we could have a chat about it or at the top of the page, there is just a link to email a question. So if you just want to email me and just say, look, I'm interested in that, you know, I'm happy to, yeah, connect with you that way, whichever mm. works. Amazing, Sue. Oh, gosh, look how far you have come. This is incredible. Yes, I am very proud of myself, I must yeah, admit. When I look be. back, I think, wow, was, was who, who am I and who was that person back then? Very different. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh. oh, Sue, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for allowing me to. We'll be sending our wishes to you over the next few weeks with your bereavement thank you i appreciate that yeah absolutely okay so that's all for today's podcast and thank you to everybody for listening and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode and let us know what you th think of the podcast by leaving us a review on apple podcasts or apple itunes or wherever you may listen so thank you sue and thank you to everybody for listening and i look forward to speaking to you in the next episode.